$1,400 stimulus check new timeline for all Social Security recipients. The past year has brought immense economic challenges for many Americans. In response, our leaders in Washington have taken action to provide crucial financial support. Most recently, the American Rescue Plan was signed into law, allocating $1,400 stimulus payments to help ease the financial hardship felt by so many. While this latest round of direct payments will certainly offer relief in the short term, there is also discussion about what additional steps may be needed and how our recovery may progress going forward. The rollout of the $1,400 economic impact payments has followed a similar timeline to previous rounds. Direct deposits began going out this week to individuals who filed their taxes electronically and provided bank account information to the IRS. This allowed payments to be seamlessly transferred for many lower-income citizens in particular. In the coming days, direct deposits will also reach an estimated 30 million retired and disabled Americans who receive benefits through programs like Social Security. Paper checks and prepaid debit cards are scheduled to be mailed out starting next week for those without bank account details on file. Eligibility for the full amount is determined based on adjusted gross income levels. Individual tax filers are eligible for the full payment if they make under $75,000 annually, while the threshold is $150,000 for joint filers. Heads of household have a limit of $112,500. Above these thresholds, the payment amount is gradually reduced until phasing out completely for single filers with incomes over $80,000 and joint filers over $160,000. A significant change from prior relief is that all dependents now qualify for $1,400 regardless of age, providing assistance for many multi-generational households. To track the status of an individual's payment, the IRS online portal remains the best resource. Citizens can check if their payment has been processed and the expected delivery date. It is advised to allow several weeks for processing, as the IRS works diligently to distribute funds but the scale of the operation means a staggered approach is necessary. While waiting, people are asked to ensure the tax agency has current contact and banking information on file to avoid delays. The funds are intended to provide broad financial relief in this ongoing difficult time. For those still unemployed or underemployed, the money can ease worries over expenses like rent, food, and essential bills. For others who have maintained their jobs, it offers flexibility to pay down debt cover unexpected costs, or simply boost savings amid economic uncertainty. No matter the individual situation, the goal is putting spending power directly in the hands of Americans as soon as safely possible. Of course, the challenge remains of how to sustain recovery moving forward. While direct payments have undoubtedly lifted many out of hardship in the short term, the need for assistance may persist for some as certain sectors struggle to fully rebound. Leaders are keeping a close eye on key indicators like unemployment rates, consumer spending levels, and GDP growth to understand where targeted support may still be prudent. Extending increased unemployment benefits and providing additional relief for small businesses are two proposals said to be under review. There is also discussion around implementing more focused policies aimed at industries most disrupted by the crisis. Industries like travel, hospitality, and entertainment saw the most dramatic declines and face an uncertain outlook even as vaccines roll out. New programs to protect jobs or support retraining for other in-demand fields could help those segments of the economy. The goal would be preventing long-term scarring effects on the workforce through carefully crafted solutions. Meanwhile, individuals are beginning to plan for the tax implications of receiving these government payments. While the stimulus funds do not count as taxable income, they may impact eligibility for valuable tax credits addressed to low- and middle-income families such as the Earned Income Tax Credit and Child Tax Credit. Consulting a financial advisor can help beneficiaries optimize their tax situation, considering these complex relief programs. With additional legislation still anticipated this year, citizens are also advised to stay informed on proposals that could introduce new benefits or support systems. The path to recovery will not be straightforward or short-lived. As we have seen throughout this crisis, conditions remain fluid and outcomes uncertain. Successfully rebounding the economy to pre-pandemic health will require flexibility, compassion, and ongoing collaboration between all levels of government as well as communities and individuals. While the light at the end of the tunnel grows brighter with each new month, there is still distance yet to travel. 
by maintaining open lines of communication and pursuing evidence-based, mutually agreeable policies, our leaders can best support Americans through whatever challenges may lie ahead. While it is hoped the latest round of economic impact payments will provide financially stability to those needing it most. For any still struggling, help and resources remain available. By staying patient yet vigilant, caring for one another, and supporting responsible decision making, communities can work as a team to see the nation through its recovery. As recovery progresses, there will be opportunities to build upon lessons learned from the pandemic crisis. One clear theme is the need for increased economic security among all Americans. Even before this period of disruption, over four in 10 adults said they did not have the savings to cover a $400 unexpected expense. The pandemic has only exacerbated longstanding financial fragility for many. Looking ahead, policymakers would be wise to consider more durable safety net programs and work-life balance policies shown to benefit both individuals and the economy. Some reform proposals under discussion could help strengthen economic resilience at the individual and community levels. Expanding access to paid family and medical leave allows workers to care for themselves and loved ones without risking their livelihoods. Similarly, enacting universal basic income programs or bolstering the social safety net through measures like expanding healthcare access and SNAP benefits would provide a foundation upon which people could better weather unexpected hardship. Such reforms have the added advantage of stimulating local economies, as benefits tend to get spent in the community quickly on essential goods and services. Another lesson of the pandemic has been the importance of digital connectivity and access to technology. As schools and workplaces moved online, millions faced barriers to remote participation due to lack of internet access or devices. While the short-term response involved increased subsidies and device donations, long-term infrastructure investment is still needed. Just as roads and bridges are acknowledged as fundamental to economic participation, high-speed broadband access should be recognized as equally vital in today's digital world. Public-private partnerships could help expand high-quality, low-cost broadband to underserved rural and low-income urban areas. Perhaps most importantly, the crisis underscored that many of the jobs most essential to our collective well-being are also among the lowest paid. Millions of healthcare, transportation, retail, food service, and childcare workers risked their health on the front lines through it all. As recovery takes shape, we should consider ways to better value and compensate these roles through policies, like increasing the minimum wage. Not only would this help individuals and families, it may also drive broader economic activity, as lower wage workers have a high propensity to spend additional funds Communities benefit when all residents can afford basic necessities and contribute as consumers.